Remove cap from test one. Test one, test one, test one, test one. Locate test strip. Test strip. Test strip. Oh, test strip on test one. Okay. Test strip in sample. Okay. It's negative. It's negative. Good morning, Vincent. Why is there a taxi parked out front? It's waiting to take me to work. Work? You going back to work? Yes, dear, I am. What's going on? Mom's going back to work. Isn't it a little soon? It has been six weeks and three days since my surgery, during which time I have become, and I think everyone will agree, a model patient. Excuse me? No fried foods, no chocolate-covered almonds, no waffles. I have embraced cardiac yoga involving meditation, visualization, breathing exercises. Well, that's nice, Mom, but... I know my limitations. If I tire, I shall come home. Now, I'm getting into a taxi and going to my office before I kill someone. Well, if you're sure, Mom... I am. And no one dare to stop me. Thank God. Oh, if I had to put up with her for one more day? Negative. Negative. It's negative. Pink line indicates pregnancy. Where's the line? Line, line. Line. You have a line. should review our mission statement. You see, we are an organization dedicated to Maxine. Hello, Sean. Maxine's back. Maxine, are you back? I am. She's back. We're done. Oh. Who was that? Not important. I'm having a moment. I need to hug you. Be careful. I have an eight-inch scar down the center of my chest. Perhaps just a brisk handshake. Sean, I have some thoughts about how we might help to reduce stress around here. May I? By all means. We need to make it a habit to talk, share, discuss feelings. And I thought perhaps some of the staff might care to join me in a lunchtime yoga class. Yoga? Stretching and breathing. It's the new drinking and smoking. Oh, you're on medication. Uh, excuse me, but there's a call about an abandoned baby at a bicycle shop. Might I handle it? You sure you're ready? Well, if not, I'll just get the taxi to take me home immediately. Taxi? Until such time as I have my doctor's clearance to drive, DCF will be providing transportation. Show me to the phone, young man. She's back. All right, uh, we are here for sentencing of Charles Dane, uh, 12, who has uh, agreed to a guilty plea on charges of assault with a deadly weapon and attempted murder. Let's see. For the record, the defendant brought a hunting knife to the residence of the victim, Mr. Timothy Bosky, his teacher at Hartford Valley Prep, whereupon he s stabbed Mr. Bosky in the stomach. 
Mr. Bosky uh, survived his injuries and, and is here today. John Caclius, Your Honor. Defense will show that powerful mitigating factors led to the events in this case and warrant consideration in sentencing. And uh, what mitigating factors are those, Mr. Caclius? Defense asserts that despite the shocking nature of the attack, this incident was an act of self-defense. Uh, ASA Thelma Ryan, Your Honor. The man was getting groceries from his car. What was the boy defending himself against? A flank steak? We have evidence to show that Mr. Bosky crossed the line of the teacher-student relationship. Uh, what's going on here? Are you making an allegation of molestation? We have concerns. You have proof? They've got nothing, Your Honor. This is a shameful waste of the court's time. We have phone records which indicate calls were being made. He called me. The kid needed a friend. Well, we know what kind of a friend you were. Oh, oh okay. Th that's enough, all of you. I, look, I mean, obviously there's a lot of emotions on the table, and we need to sort that out. So when will we do that, Mr. Van Exel? This afternoon, 3.30. I'll see everyone then. Maxine Gray, Department of Children and Families. Is there a manager on the premises? Well, that'd be me. And you are? I'm Zach. I'm a manager trainee. I got promoted after Toby split for the X Games circuit. Congratulations. One of your customers called about a baby abandoned at this location. Oh, yeah, that, that, was, um, that was a misunderstanding. Was there a baby or wasn't there? Well, I mean, there is, yeah, but he wasn't abandoned. Is he bike shopping? He's my brother. Your brother? Yes, ma'am, and his name is Jake. I need to see him at once. I'm kind of trying to get him down for a nap Zachary, right now. show me the baby. Here he is, my little bro. Well, hello, Jake. <laughs> there we go. Well, he's perfect. What's he doing here? Well, um, my mom, she had a job interview today, and, uh, I don't know, she's real close to getting this gig at a hotel, but her babysitter split, and I'd work. Can I? I gotta feed him. Oh. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Ah, there you go. But uh, she'll be back in, like, an hour, if you want to wait. No, I think for now I'll just, um, I'll take your name and your mother's name. I'm Zachary Pettit, and my mom's name is Virginia. Well, here's my card. Um, have your mother call me as soon as she arrives. Okay. And if I don't hear from her, I'll be back. I don't want that, right? Oh, you surely do not. <laughs> he OD? They took him away in an ambulance this morning. <sighs> he he was later. fine. I... I just talked to him. He told me he was keeping clean. Vincent, he's a junkie. He lies. It's his job. He's smart. We talk politics. Look, he will be okay or he won't. You gotta move on. You cannot let yourself care. Excuse me? I'm serious. You gotta insulate yourself. Put up a wall. Is that a little insensitive? No, it's called survival. If you get wrapped up in these people and their lives, it will take you down. I thought the idea was to make a connection. No, the idea is to help from a distance. You can't help if you don't protect yourself. Teal. It wasn't his fault. Okay. All right. Okay. Put your head back. Okay. Of course, you know who me is. I hope. Um, so, listen, I just... Uh, oh, I, I don't know why I called. I don't know, even know if you'll get this. You're probably sailing into some crazy beautiful sunset right now, and I'm looking at the same four walls. So why did I call? Um, I missed you. The sound of your voice... Oh, wait. You know, I had a million things to say. I just, I can't think of a single one right now. 
You know, I mean, what, what do you say to somebody on a boat? Watch out for bigger boats. David, I'm pregnant. I just, um, just wanted you to know. The breath of life, stress relief through breathing. I'm starting my lunchtime workshop. Get your name in early. You're serious about this. Yoga, you. It turns out I'm quite a natural. Sorry, I, I can't wrap my head around it. Would you like to see me place both palms flat on the floor? Oh, dearly, no. Mrs. Gray. Um, I ran that name you gave me. Kicked out this. Is this going to upset her? Pretty much. Oh, this is not good. What? Zachary Pettit. Kid from the bike shop? Turns out he has no brother, nor has he a mother, nor any family at all. Zachary Pettit was in the system. Was? He walked away from a group home. He's been AWOL for seven months. Damn it! Told you. Maxine? I know, Sean. Uh, breathe. Must remember to breathe. <laughs> Full. I know you're full. Everyone's full. Make room. No, no, do not put me on hold. I'm on hold. What happened to not caring? We get involved. There is a difference. Yes, Crystal Turner Outreach. Yeah, I got a girl here who needs a bed. Is she okay? She's got a broken nose and some cuts, but other than that, she's good to go. Thank you. What happened out there? I messed up. How? It was cold. I took a break. Breaks are against the rules. Who makes the rules? My man Wayne. He looks out for me. Yeah, I can see that. Hi. OK, I got her a bed. Sanctuary house, one of the good ones. I got to get back on the clock. You're going. And you're driving. Come on. Where is this place? It's on Pearl and Hudson. It's a 30-bed facility with on-site medical care, counseling, and security to keep you away from the man who did this to you. You don't understand. Wayne keeps me safe. He cares about me. My family don't even care. Teal, this is me you're talking to. I care. I'll get in the van. Charlie was in my class. And I could tell right away he's a bright kid. But something seemed off. He was lonely. Expand on that. How do you mean lonely? He's one of those kids you hear about, isolated. He didn't relate to any of the other kids. They made fun of him. I felt sorry for him. So you befriended him? He stayed after class. We talked. We're both a couple computer geeks. So we played games online. He infected Charlie's mind. Counsel? Look, the kid craved adult attention. I figured, what would it hurt? Little did I know. Can you tell us when the relationship went sour? The kids are encouraged to email, which Charlie did. But then he started with the IMs and the phone calls. One day, he showed up at my townhouse, unannounced. I knew I had to put a stop to it, so I told him, we have to limit our friendship to inside the classroom. How did he take it? He lost it. He told me he hated me, that I had thrown him away. And then he ran, and I didn't see him again until he came back with the knife. And what happened then? We're clearly rehashing. This is already in the record. Victim impact. It's relevant. Continue. At first, I thought it was a toy. Then Charlie lunged at me, and I felt this electric jolt in my stomach. I looked down, and there was blood everywhere, and he ran. Your Honor, the defendant left this man to die. He, he, he made him do it. Mrs. Dane. He, he did, he did M Mrs. This. Dane, you have been warned. He's a pedophile. Oh, come on. Uh, Marshal, would you remove Mrs. Dane from the courtroom, please? Charlie was a good boy until he met that man. He, he did things to him. He ruined my baby. She's wrong. I tried to help. Get and look what I got for her. 
I almost bled to death and I lost my job. Why? Why did you lose your job? They put me on unpaid leave for having a relationship with a student outside of school. My first job. My career's over. Zachary Pettit, Maxine Gray, DCF. Zach, I know you have the afternoon off. Open up. Miss Gray, he was asleep when I went out. He needed milk. I was only gone for like 10 minutes. Open that door this instant. Where is this baby's mother? We broke up. Right after he was born. Her name's Skye. She was in the group home, too. When she got pregnant, we had to hide it. Where was Jake born? In a car. I beg your pardon? It was abandoned behind the bus station. We were living in it. How did you know what to do? I had a book with pictures. I cut the umbilical cord myself with a box cutter, just like it showed. You delivered your own son. Well, afterwards, Sky freaked. She... She wanted to just leave him somewhere, abandon him, like in a dumpster, you know? But I said, no way. I mean, I told her that she could do whatever she wanted. I didn't care, but I was taking care of Jake, no matter what. Zachary. Where is she now? I haven't seen her since that day. I admire what you're doing, Zach. I do. But you... You can't go on like this. Look, I do right by him, Miss Gray. I give him everything he needs. I give him something that I've never had. A father stays. I have to take him, Zach. No. No, come on, please, please, come I on. I will do everything I can to work things out for the two of you. Until then, I'm afraid I have no choice. I think I have a minute with him. Take whatever time you need. I'm just, uh... You okay? Should I call someone? He ran, Sean. Who? The petted boy. He took his baby. They're out there now on the street, in this weather. They'll find it. I had no option but to remove. You did what you had to do. Look, we've been here before. You know how this works, right when it feels the most hopeless, that's when you get the miracle. I hope you're right. It's been a long first day back. Come on, let me drive you home. room. How'd it go? Uh, oh. Uh, more stressful than I'd like. Maybe you rush things a little. The, uh, the first part of the day I felt uh, better than ever. They say that happens when your, when your circulation improves. Promise me you'll be careful. Yes, I promise. Oh. 
when you were a little baby. We used to sit here just like this. <laughs> and I know. <sighs> I'd watch you watch the flames until your eyes got heavy. I'm pregnant. I missed a period. Took one of those home tests that came up positive, so I went to see a doctor. She confirmed it. Oh my. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, I don't know. Alone, I guess. I left a message for David, wherever he is, on his boat. Will he be coming back? Trying not to need him to. I'm gonna be 40, Mom. 40. <laughs> Pregnant. You have options. I know. I know. Would you like to talk about them? Maybe tomorrow. Right now, I just want you to watch until my eyes get heavy. Why did you stab Mr. Bosky? You could have killed him. Were you trying to kill him? No. Then help me out here. Why would you do something like that? He lied. What do you mean he lied? He said we'd always be friends. He told me that. He made everything okay. Then he did it. Charlie. Was there something going on between you and Mr. Bosky? No. The state wants me to put you away for a long time. So I'm going to ask you again. Was there anything inappropriate going on between you and Mr. Bosky? They want me to say stuff happened, but it didn't. Who's they? My mom. Charlie. Mrs. Dane. Charlie, talk to me. Talk to me and tell me exactly what's going on. Tim was the only friend I ever had. My parents, they don't care. That's not true. No, it's, it's not. It... When I was little, they were proud of me. They used to show me off. They'd come to everything I had. Plays, scouts. It was cool. But then, I got sick. And my dad left. My mom changed. She stopped coming to things. We stopped going places. I, I can't remember the last thing we did. My dad's busy with his life. My mom doesn't care. I'm their kid. And they just blew me off. That's a lie. Not again, Mrs. Dane. He's lying to, to protect M that Marshall, man. would you take Mrs. Dane Please, into my chambers me. immediately? Won't anybody listen to me? Counsel. All right. Light on. Thank you. So... Give me one good reason why I shouldn't throw you into jail for contempt. Do you know what it's like out there? Sitting by, watching what they're doing to my son? Your son stabbed a man, Mrs. Dane. That man almost died. It wasn't his fault. The, the no accountability defense. Well, that just, that doesn't fly with me. He was pushed. How? He was compromised. Proof, Mrs. Dane. I need proof. You don't understand. Well, maybe you should explain it to me. 
Because from where I sit, it seems like you would do anything to keep from blaming your son or yourself. The things your son said up there, was any of that true? I tried with Charlie, I really did. I gave him everything. That's not what he says. He was such a perfect baby, so full of promise. He tested off the charts, verbal skills, musical aptitude. He could plunk out a tune on the piano when he wasn't even two. It was as though he was gifted. People called him a, a prodigy. And then what, he had the nerve to grow up, become a normal kid? You have to understand that when I found out I was pregnant, I was 42 years old. I thought that part of my life was over. This was like a miracle. And then he grew up and started having problems. Asthma, allergies, learning disabilities. Dealing with him became so stressful. Nick finally had enough and walked out. He married a woman half my age. They had a baby right away. And he simply erased that part of his life and moved on. And I'm left to deal with it. And it's hard. <laughs> he was my baby. He was perfect. Wait a minute. Mothering him was only worth it if he was perfect? That, that's, that's not what I meant. That's what she said. No, you're twisting my words around. Do you love your son? Mrs. Dane? Do you love your son? Sean, you're not breathing. I, I can't do yoga. I'm a Presbyterian. We are here to share, to express our feelings, to head off stress at the pass. Who would like to begin? Oh, I, I should take this. Then I will go. This is Sean. Yesterday, I attempted to remove a baby from his father. Really? Father ran, of course. That is now, terrific news. Now they're on the street. If he were a young woman, there would be places for he and his baby to go. But young fathers have no such options. What does this say to these young men? We need more choices. We need to, to rail against a system with no ears and insist that it hear, that it see, that it evolve. And, Zachary and Pettit turned himself in. They're holding impending action from DCF. The baby's fine. Thank God they're off the street. Now what? How about Love Street House? Love Street House is a home for young women, Sean. Well, now, I thought that you were going to rail against the system get people to listen. Jay, get the car. Lily's a bitch to find in winter. Oh, David. Oh, my God. You came back. From like the ocean. Oh my God, here's fast as I could. Well, I didn't mean for you to. I came back. It's a little crazy, Dad. Pregnant? Yeah. You know? I mean, do you have any idea what this means? Mm -hmm. The things that can go wrong at my age. Miscarriages, stillbirths, genetic problems. I could get toxemia, placenta previa. No, you won't. Tired. I could get tired. Do you know? I mean, not to say what this means in the long term, David. This is for life. Yeah. I mean, do you want to be raising a teenager at age 60? I don't and don't say yes, because you can't possibly know that. And whatever happens, we'll get through it together. together. Right. I just saw you get on a boat and sail up a God knows where, and now you're back. Why are you back? Do you want to be I'm... back? I mean, th this is in a relationship for, like, ever, you know? I mean, how could I be pregnant? I just bought three pairs of capri pants. Hey, I love you. 
Well, I love you too, but is that enough? I just, I... Excuse me, Judge Gray. We gotta get started. Hi, Bruce. David. We'll do this later, okay? You got some. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what you're asking. It's a fairly simple question, Chloe. What do you do with young unwed fathers who want to be there for their babies? <laughs> Why don't you just ask me what I do with unicorns? <laughs> Beg pardon? Young stand-up fathers don't exist. All those young superstars in the NBA, you think they take time out from their game to go to parenting classes with their baby mamas? I know a young man who can change your mind. Maxine, even if I believed you, I'm full. Chloe, sorry, but it's a mess now. The sink's backed up. Maxine, I wish I could help you, but as you can see, Wait, Maxine, you know how to unclog a sink? No, but I may know someone who does. Where my money at? Excuse me? My money, homie. What money? My $500. I seen you drive off with my girl. Teal, took her right off the street. Pay the man, trick ass. You crazy? But you think I'm a little bitch? You can just run off with my girl and not pay? Look, this is gonna happen one of two ways. You let me do what I'm doing, or I'm gonna call the police. Maybe I'll give you something to talk about. Charles Dane, a minor, has admitted to taking a knife to the residence of his teacher, Mr. Tim Bosky, and stabbing him with it. It's a shocking, shocking crime. And I'm left to wonder who is responsible. Charlie? Well, certainly. He's the one who decided to use the knife. But why did he do it? I think that he saw the only real source of love and acceptance in his life going away. Having been, for all intents and purposes, abandoned by both of his parents, he could not handle that rejection. And he snapped. You had your son late in life. He was a miracle. He was a fantasy come true. But when the reality of raising him did not live up to that fantasy or make up for the unhappiness in your marriage, you gave up on him. You failed your son. You failed yourself. Your Honor, I have something to say. Go on, Mr. Bosky. Look, Charlie made a mistake, but maybe it's as much my fault. I was new. It was my first teaching job. Maybe I should have seen the signs. Should have gotten him some help. I came here hating that kid, hoping you would send him away forever. Don't do that, Judge. Don't throw him away. He deserves a chance. I forgive him. I do forgive you, Charlie. So... It's fascinating to me that the victim of this crime is the only person who really sees this boy clearly. Mr. Van Exel, will drop a letter to the school board, urging them to give Mr. Bosky his job back. Gladly. All right, I am committing Charles Dane to DCF as a delinquent for a term of 18 months 
for uh, initial placement in a group home or residential treatment center to be selected and supervised by parole services. Uh, further, I am ordering both his father and his mother to engage in family therapy during his commitment. Now, this is an order, and I will not hesitate to apply appropriate sanctions if the parents fail to follow this order in good faith. You have another chance as a mother, Mrs. Dane. Own it. Appreciate it. Use it. You will be required to put in a 40 hour work week, maintaining the bathrooms, keeping the kitchen clean, and the grounds. Never been a janitor before. You were never a father before. I'll get Chloe, Mrs. Gray. You will have your own room. You will be paid minimum wage. There is a strict code of behavior, and you will obey the rules. You and Jake will be together. Once you become 18, that'll be up to you. Here he is. Here's your chance, Zach. Don't screw it up. Thank you, Miss Gray. Thank you. Hey, mister. How long have you been sitting there? A while. Well, come in. It's cold. No. Come. Sit with me, I'll keep you warm. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's just... I know. I mean, how do we... We'll figure it out. Are you sure? Yeah. I am. insane. I'm in shock. I forget about it. And then I'm thrilled. It's it's amazing. But I'm confused. Mostly. This is your decision. I'm just here. I'm here. desk side matter. You know, Teal bolted Sanctuary House. She's back working the streets. God, that sucks. Yes, big time. It's like I said, some make it, most don't. You do what you can, and then you let it go. No, this is different. She broke your heart. Yes, she did. But there's always tomorrow. You talk a good game, but I'm not buying it. It's late. She got to you. Don't push this. Hey. Let me walk you out. Maybe I should walk you out. 
Uh, uh, I don't need your pity. Uh, oh, I think I sprained my toe. Oh, you don't have to do that. God, that's amazing. The human body, what it can endure. I'm grateful for the scar. But I don't recognize it as part of my body yet. It's... I suppose that comes with time. I do resent what they did to my legs. Well, they have to find the vein somewhere. My legs were always my best feature. Your smile is your best feature. You're not a man, Amy. Men have always r responded to my legs. <laughs> Is that what this is about, Ma? Trolling for guys? <laughs> You're strong and beautiful. Oof. And alive. Guys really dig that. How are you? Still pregnant. I mean, you know having this baby means being in a relationship with David for the rest of my life. It does. <sighs> I don't have a very good history with long-term relationships. Yes, dear, we've met. And I'm worried about work, you know. It's taken me a long time to get to where I am, and this would mean taking time off, losing momentum. Undoubtedly. Talk to me, Ma. Help me get my head around this. Let us look at what you are not. You're not a teenage mother, you're not poor, you're not married. Are you saying... No, oh, we're simply making a list. You are healthy, and educated, privileged, and loved. Our family has the resources, both physical and uh, emotional, to embrace another child. Children change your whole life, honey, you know that. Have a baby and you're courting change. Change seems to be courting us, Ma. Well, yes. I want this baby. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Stay tuned for scenes from our next episode.